Welcome back to another edition of Ask a Dev. Today's question comes from Luke and he asks, what were some of the key insights out of WWDC 2015? Well, another WWDC is in the books and Apple has given developers plenty of new features to enhance their applications. Here are three of the biggest. First up, the iPad just got a lot better now that the long rumored multitasking mode has finally become a reality. This allows two apps to be running at the same time, which will be great for power users, but only on the latest iPad Air. If you have an older iPad, you can still use the slide over multitasking feature, but two apps will not be available for interaction at the same time. Apple also introduced picture in picture mode, which lets any video app continue showing video content while the user is utilizing another app. This will be great for users who like to view other content on their iPad without having their video playback stop. For developers, this feature has two major impacts. First, you need to be very aggressive with your memory management and ensure you are following the latest best practices. There's a great session from WWDC this year that I recommend you watch. The other impact is size classes. It's finally time to stop thinking about iPad and iPhone designs and start thinking about regular and compact size classes. With multitasking, an exact representation of your iPhone app can be running on the iPad. If you are not already supporting both platforms, it's time to do so. Next up is Proactive, Apple's take on enhancing their digital assistant to compete with the latest Google Now functionality. While not as all-encompassing as Google Now, Apple has pushed ahead to make it easier to bubble up relevant content to the user when they need it most. Apple is also taking a different approach, requiring a developer to provide the information directly to the system rather than crawling for it automatically like Google. Apple is promoting their privacy advantage here and has made it easy for developers to plug into. We'll see if that results in a great experience for the user, but all developers should think about how their apps fit into this system going forward. And finally, Swift moved to 2.0 with some really nice features. It appears Swift has matured greatly in just a year, and if you aren't already, it's time to start writing in Swift. Nearly all of the sessions were presented in Swift this year, so it's clear Apple is pushing that language as the language to be doing iOS and Mac development going forward. In addition to that, Apple has also announced they will be open sourcing Swift this fall under a permissive license. This is huge news, as it means anyone will be able to take Swift and use it any way they see fit. In the future, we will definitely see Swift used to write web backends and even Android apps. Swift will be an incredibly important language going forward, so no better time than the present to get started. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to tweet your questions with hashtag AskADev or just leave them in the comments below.